Well, good afternoon. Today we are looking at apoptosis and necrosis. So, let's get a definition. So, cell death. So, damage to molecules and cells can lead to necrosis if the damage is great and cell cycle arrests to allow time for repair. If the cell cannot be repaired, then cell death may follow, known as apoptosis, programmed cell death. So, here's a summary of the mechanisms of cell death. You can see here apoptosis, ne necrosis, mitotic catastrophe, and senescence. So measuring cell death. So you can use cell viability assays such as the MTT assay, which measures the change in colour of a dye. Purple colour indicates cells are metabolically active. The dead cells are metabolically inactive, so are not purple, and this does not distinguish between apoptosis and necrosis. You can use cell leakage assays. So the lactate dehydrogenase activity can be measured, which is released from the damaged cells. <coughs> so this is particularly useful for measuring necrosis where the cell contents are released. Cytotoxicity assays are more common along with various apoptosis tests. You can have toxic compounds that tend to induce apoptosis. Tests for DNA fragmentation and exon 5 appearance, cytochrome C and LDH leakage, and also assays for metabolically active cells. However, primary hepatocytes are very difficult to work with. So you can see here live cells, mitochondrial reductase present. And then the absorbance is red here. This is how a non cytotoxic dose is determined via the MTT assay. So the low non the low non cytotoxic dose can be determined. You also have the comet assay, which measures DNA damage. You see in the picture above. Chronogenic assay, which measures survival over time, and the tunnel assay, which measures DNA damage. So you can see here the tunnel assay there. So the types of cell death, as I mentioned before, are necrosis and apoptosis. So necrosis releases cell contents and lead to inflammation in the surrounding tissue, and apoptosis dismantles cells in an organized way and contents are not released. So for apoptosis, it's programmed cell death induced by less severe but irreparable damage in normal processes too. It's a tightly regulated process that requires energy, the cell integrity is retained, cellular constituents are destroyed internally via DNA cleavage, fragmentation, and proteolysis of proteins. So how does the apoptosis process work? So apoptotic signal is received by the CD95 receptors, which results in adjudication of caspase B zymogens and self-cleavage activation. This triggers the rest of the cascade culminating in caspase 9 associated with the APAF and cytochrome C to form the apotosome, which is the main way target proteins are cleaved. All of the activities of these proteins are regulated by both pro- and anti-apoptotic factors such as BAX and BCL2. Generally, there's a battle in the cell between the amounts of pro and anti apoptosis, and depending on the relative concentration of either, you get apoptosis. More pro apoptosis, BCL2, family member proteins, for example. And then this diagram you can see here the process of apoptosis works, leading to the cleavage of target proteins. So, to summarize apoptosis, programmed cell deaths so are normal, normal cell, cell shrinks. Chromosome condensation, the membrane blebbing occurs, nuclear collapse, continued blebbing, apoptotic body formation, and lysis of apoptotic bodies. Let's have a look here of typical apoptotic phenotype. So the DNA fermentation you can see, condensation of the nucleus, cell shrinkage, blebbing of the membranes, phosphodiliserine externalization, and caspase free activation. So all these can be measured and can be measures of indicators of apoptosis. As I mentioned before, you have all apoptosis assays, so you can measure the various markers of apoptosis, such as comet and tunnel assays to measure DNA fermentation. You can measure the phosphator diserine PS externalization, and exon 5 is a protein that binds to PS, and the assay measures the amount of an exon 5 on the surface of the cells. We can measure the levels of caspase 3 and whether it is activated. Activation of caspase 3 can be measured using antibodies and enzyme assay catch. Necrosis is a name given to unprogrammed death of cells in living tissues. It is less orderly apoptosis, which are pro part of programmed cell death. In contrast to apoptosis, cleanup of cell debris by fetal sites of this immune system is generally more difficult, as a disorderly death generally does not send cell signals which, which tell nearby fetal sites to engulf the dying cell. This lack of signaling makes it harder for the immune system to locate and recycle dead cells which have died from necrosis if the cell will undergo apoptosis. The release of intercellular content after cellular membrane damage is a cause of inflammation and necrosis. There are many causes of necrosis, including injury, infection, cancer, infarction, toxins, and inflammation.
Now move on to necrosis. So necrosis is caused by non-physiological stimuli such as severe external damage, cell lysis, loss of cell integrity and membranes bust. This is a passive process that requires no energy. Liberation of all cellular content on the surrounding area will lead to other consequences such as inflammation and spread on it. Damnation. So here's a wee diagram here showing the differences in apoptosis and necrosis you can see. So you can see the cell shapes and how it changes from time zero to 30, 40 minutes, four hours, etc. How the concentrations are increased of MTS, the caspase, the LDH, etc., the ATP. And then on the right hand side, you can see the apoptosis and necrosis microscopic image of what it looks like. Here's another wee diagram to show how nucleus and organelles bleb into the different processes of necrosis and apoptosis. You know, so the nucleus begins to break apart and the DNA breaks into small places. The organelles are also located in the blebs. The cell breaks into several apoptotic bodies. The organelles are all still functional. This is apoptosis. Necrosis, the small blebs form. The structure of the nucleus changes. The blebs fuse and become larger. And the cell membrane ruptures and releases the cell's content. The organelles are not functioning. No. So let's have a look at mitotic catastrophe, as I mentioned before. This is a type of cell death occurring during mitosis, so it's aberrant mitosis, so it's out of control. So it occurs as a result of DNA damage or deranged spindle formation coupled to the debilitation of different checkpoint mechanisms that would normally arrest progression into mitosis and hence suppress catastrophic events until repair has been achieved. The combination of checkpoint deficiencies and specific types of damage would lead to mitotic catastrophe. So one of the major death mechanisms when cells opposed to radiation in cells is aberrant P53. The appearance is formation of giant cells of aberrant nuclear morphology, a centrosome hyperamplification and multiple nuclei, and or several micronuclei. These cells may survive for days, transit, transit into senescence, or die by delayed apoptosis or delayed necroptosis, respectively. So you can see here, cells in mitotic catastrophe can go on to apoptosis and necrosis. Still a lot to discover about this sort of process, but that's the end of the video today. So I hope we've had fun and look forward to the next one.